there's a Senate hearing underway into the collapse of a billion dollar crypto exchange. Indiana Senator Mike Braun was in that hearing. We're going to speak to him just moments from now. But the founder of the troubled FTX exchange is not at the hearing, and he does not appear to be cooperating with investigators. But he is beginning to share his story with the media. Correspondent Sarah Williamson has the very latest on what's next for Sam Bankman-Fried. Sarah? Good morning, Emma. Well, FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried, he actually isn't speaking with the investigators for now, but is opening up to the New York Times Deal Book Summit. Now, in what was his first public appearance since the downfall of FDX, Bankman Freed is insisting that he never tried to commit fraud and repeatedly denies knowing the extent of what was happening within the crypto exchange business. He is blaming huge management failures and sloppy accounting for the collapse of his $32 billion company, sparking civil and criminal investigations. Now, these investigators, uh, investigations rather, are focusing on whether FTX broke the law by lending its customers funds to trading firm Alameda Research, which Bankman Freed also owns. And when asked if he was concerned about criminal liability, Sam Bankman Freed had this to say. I don't think that, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't personally think that I have, uh, you know, but. I, I think the real answer is that's not, it sounds weird to say, but but it, I think the real answer is that's not what I'm focusing on. Um, it's, uh, there's going to be a time and a place for me to sort of think about myself and my own future, but I don't think this is it. Like, right now, I mean, look, I, I've had a bad month. Um, <laughs> this has not been a fun day for me, but... That's not what matters here. And then today, in what is being called the Rehab Tour, appearing on ABC's Good Morning America with former Clinton senior policy advisor George Stephanopoulos, SBF sat down for another tell-all, his second interview in two days. So Sam Bankman-Fried seems to be opting for some friendlier probing, you could say, instead of answering to that Senate committee that began their probe today into how the FDF's collapse actually did happen, Sean and Emma. All right, joining us live with that, uh, Sarah Williamson. We continue to follow that story straight out of the New York newsroom. Sarah, thank you. Based on what we know thus far, a lot of the issues that have arisen and, and sort of come to light is significant conflicts of interest, significant uh, allegations of commingling customer money and house money, lack of books and records, lack of corporate governance and risk controls, just to name a few. That was the commissioner of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission speaking to senators this at an FTX-related hearing earlier this morning. It comes in the aftermath of the collapse of FTX, where billions of dollars were lost. Where did it go? Indiana Senator Mike Braun was a part of that hearing. He joins us live. Senator, good to see you. Thank you so much for taking the good time. To be on. For yeah, for the viewers this morning, appreciate that. Did anything new come from this hearing? Was it much of what you expected? What can you share with us? I'm actually up in about 20, 25 minutes because every senator is weighing in on this issue. I've been watching and listening. Um, no, I don't know that we'll get to the bottom of it here today, but I will say that we've got something instructive. Look back generally two decades ago when we went through the whole dot-com uh, scenario. You remember the collapse there. It was due to the uncertainty surrounding that new dynamic. That would have been dot-com companies. We now have kind of blended that into the landscape, but there was a lot of trial and tribulation there. Here, it's more complicated. We don't know if we're dealing with a medium of exchange. We don't know if it's a commodity. We don't know if it's a security. And then you get characters like uh, Sam showing up. And uh, I mean, I don't know that you could write a novel that would have more peculiarities to it. So yeah. what we're gonna try to do today, I think is distill where we should be. Uh, I personally think it's got characteristics of both. Uh, I think any of the entities involved, like the exchange, that's clearly a security uh, kind of analog. Mm -hmm. The currencies themselves, you know, look more like a commodity. And I can tell you for cryptocurrencies, you generally can't have the volatility 
that have been associated with them because a currency number one is a medium of exchange. Nobody wants a medium of exchange that could be worth 50% less a week or two later. A lot of things need to sort themselves out. It does need to be regulated. Something that looks like it's got this much potential from the blockchain technology mm -hmm. to all the currencies. I was looking a moment ago, hell, there are 50 or 60 exchanges that have arisen. So we'll have to do something to regulate it, or I don't think consumers will have confidence in it in the long run, but we don't want to smash the fact that it's decentralizing something that has generally been a yeah. sovereign currency, and some of that looks questionable down the road. It, so are the regulations or the possibility of regulations on cryptocurrency, that topic of discussion, is that separate from FTX and SBF? And, and how often does uh, FTX and, and Sam Bankman-Fried get mentioned in this hearing? Well, I think it's a lot. Uh, when I, uh, I'm going to mention, uh, when I get to it, I try not to repeat a question. I'm generally one of the last to answer on this committee. So uh, I think what I've been listening to and hearing would be a lot of uncertainty around what we're even dealing with. Until we get down, I'm going to ask Benham uh, that question I just brought up, security or commodity, okay. and take a look at currencies that are currently traded. Okay. Uh, you've got just a few exchanges. You don't have a bunch, but this okay. is so new, uh, whether it'll get down to fewer exchanges with some regulation so you don't swamp the whole you know, technology and dynamic, we're at the early stages of this, and I think we're mostly on a mission of seeking information today. Yeah, very early stages. I'm going to let you go. I know you have to prepare. Uh, just final question for you. I have to ask you, you know, as well as I do and many of the viewers, rumors swirling that you would be running for governor of your state, the Indy Star reporting. You filed the paperwork for the 2024 race. Uh, Senator Mike Braun, are you running for governor of Indiana? You know, I filed the paperwork to do it a couple days ago, and uh, I am going to go back and run for governor. There'll be a formal public announcement outside the legal foundation of filing the papers here in 10 days or so. Uh, I worked hard to get here. Uh, this place, sadly, is going to get worse before it gets better. We need term limits. We need a balanced budget amendment. We need leaders that aren't going to keep taking us down the road of trillion and a half dollar deficits. 31 trillion in debt. Biden put a budget out there, puts us 45 trillion in debt. Something's got to change here. I'm going to go back, try to run a state, and make sure that we at our state level come up with the solutions that you may try to adopt out here someday. All right. Indiana Senator Mike Braun will let you get to it and could be governor in a couple of years. Mike Braun, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate the announcement. Thank you. You're welcome. No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how, how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.